This video covers everything you need to know about Raiden Shogun, who is now getting her first rerun banner, and since she's been out for a while, I've been using her almost on a daily basis and have cleared many abyss rotations with this character. So in this video, I will show you how to get the best value out of Raiden, how to play her optimally, and of course, show you how to build her with every weapon ranking included. So, the first thing that's important to look at is Raiden's playstyle and talents. Now, her elemental skill isn't going to be amazing when it comes to dealing damage, however, it's the utility and support that you need to care about. After activating it, anyone else, including Raiden herself, will have their burst damage multiplier increased, depending on how much energy it costs. This bonus can be improved by raising the skill all the way to level 9, and here's an example of damage you can gain from it when using someone like Yai with 90 energy and Albedo with 40 energy burst costs. You usually want to always start every fight by activating her skill, but keep in mind because of the way internal cooldowns and elemental gauges work, you might want to actually avoid hitting the enemies with the initial skill attack. A good example is running Raiden in a team with Vaporize. If you use Raiden's skill, then Bennett's burst, you'll notice the enemy ends up with Electro status on them, and this is not ideal if your next follow-up attack comes from someone like Child, who won't be able to Vaporize his burst. So instead, use Raiden's skill, but make sure it doesn't hit the enemy, then use Benny's burst, and now the enemy has Pyro Aura, and you're able to Vaporize them. But other Otherwise, I highly recommend to always start fights with Raiden's skill so that her teammates can boost their burst damage. Now, when it comes to her burst, the majority of its damage comes from the initial slash, but with the right combos, you can also dish out a lot of damage. My own personal favorite that I've been using for a long time is just spamming one normal hit followed by a charge attack, or simply called N1C, and I can do this about 6 times before her burst ends. There are, however, better ways of doing it, but the difference in damage is marginal, although you might sometimes need it, so a combo like the one shown here has been known to be pretty strong when trying to squeeze out her damage. Still, what I do not recommend doing is just spamming her normal attacks, because adding up all of it leads to significantly less damage that you could otherwise do with my other previously mentioned combos. Just remember, Raiden gains insane stagger resistance, so no one can interrupt when she's doing her charged attacks, and it's really easy to get into the flow of chaining combos together. Finally, regarding the resolve mechanic, this ring around her basically indicates how strong her burst is going to be when unleashed, and you build her resolve by using other party members' bursts. The amount of resolve she gains depends on how expensive their burst was, so in a scenario when using her popular rational team, you can expect to see about 44 resolve out of 60 which is the maximum, but thanks to her second passive, it's going to end up somewhere around 48 to 50 resolve. And remember how I said you want to start fights with her skill? Well, that's the whole idea. By first unleashing everyone's bursts besides Raiden, they provide her with a resolve, and then her own burst in return becomes much stronger. So in almost every rotation, you start fights with Raiden's skill, then keep switching to everyone else, before getting back to her and then activating her burst. Also, I'll talk about her energy generation in a few moments, but for now, just keep in mind that you want to hit enemies with her burst attacks to restore energy, which can be done up to 5 times. Oh, and one last thing, when it comes to talent leveling priority, make sure to first focus getting her burst as high as possible, then raise her skill to at least level 6, but don't bother with her normal attacks because they do not contribute damage to her burst, and ideally, you want to end up first maxing out burst and then skill afterwards at around level 9, so they both provide the best value for the whole team. Making certain artifact choices for Raiden is extremely important and there's a lot of popular questions I want to cover quickly, so let's just start with the first one. How much energy recharge does she need? Now, the reason why a lot of people ask this is because of her passive talent that for every additional 1% energy recharge, Raiden will restore more energy for the team when using her burst and increase her own electro damage bonus. Without getting too much into the details, I highly recommend to aim for 200% energy recharge, which will translate to 20 total energy you will restore for the team when using her burst and 40% additional electro damage bonus that she will gain. Also, keep in mind this is flat energy she gives to the team, so their own energy recharge won't increase it further. Now, going past this breakpoint is only recommended if you have engulfing lightning on her, and that would still be about 250% before you have to stop and focus on other stats. In fact, I would say that because of this passive, energy recharge for Raiden is like a nice to have until a certain breakpoint stat, and when you're using her with other good characters that provide energy, well, you can even go lower than 200% as long as Raiden is able to get that burst ready off cooldown. 
And I think this is the perfect time to mention the other big thing players worry about. Should you go for energy recharge or attack sense? Well, as I've already told you, it's all about that certain breakpoint in energy recharge that you want to reach for Raiden. So if ER sense helps you do that, it's worth going for. But generally speaking, most endgame players tend to go for attack sense just because this stat scales better with damage boosting characters or team weapons. But again, if you have engulfing lightning, ER sense will provide about roughly the same value as attack. Lastly, regarding Goblet and Circlet, just go with Electro Damage Bonus on Goblet and either Critical Rate or Damage on Circlet, no questions asked. The only time you should consider attack over Electro Damage Bonus Goblet is when it has really good substats and you literally have no decent Electro Goblet to show for. Speaking of artifacts, Emblem of Severed Fate Forset is hands down the best in slot for her, there's nothing else that comes close, and the only time you should look for alternatives is when you're still working towards Emblem Set, which in that case, a combination of two sets that provide either attack, electro damage bonus, and or burst damage are your best bet. But to summarize everything, these are all the recommendations I've mentioned about artifacts, with a special note about substat priority, which as you can see, it's nothing special, basically as usual. Just go for the highest value critical rate or damage, followed by attack, then energy recharge, and anything else afterwards. The biggest takeaway about Raiden's artifacts is to be mindful about her effective energy recharge breakpoint and to have a healthy 2 to 1 ratio, so you can see those beautiful purple numbers fly off in all directions. I think it's about time we get into weapon rankings for Raiden, but before we begin, I want to let you know that it takes only a few seconds for anyone, especially a content creator, to just search up the numbers about Raiden's weapons and present them as it is, which is fine, but since you're watching my video, I'll be honest to you about some of the choices and rankings that I've seen so far floating around. First, we need to draw the line where the comparisons begin, and for this job, the baseline weapon is going to be a fully refined catch, since you can obtain it for free at any time in the game, and the only thing it costs are 10 hours of sucking out the fun out of you. But it's definitely worth grinding for for this polearm, because the passive is tailor-made for Raiden, and not only will it boost her overall burst damage, but it will also increase her burst critical rate by 12%, which makes it so much easier at closing the gap towards the golden 2 to 1 ratio. Now, the energy recharge substat is also nice, but the base attack is a bit low, and it's crucial to understand that to see her swing for at least 80,000 damage will require some teammates who can boost her attack. See, the thing is, I've seen a lot of players in the community underestimate attack, and a lot of people tend to get blinded by this obsession of getting that perfect critical rate and damage ratio, when in fact, for something like the catch, you really benefit a lot from attack, which is why having attack sands is a great idea, as well as bringing more teammates that can boost attack as well. But this is where I want to talk about two other 4-star options that kind of address this situation. First we have Deathmatch, a polearm that you mainly use as a stat stick, while the passive is a nice to have thing, but I would only recommend using it if you severely lack critical rate or you have it fully refined, otherwise, in almost every other scenario, the catch is better unless you want to give it to someone else in the team, like this chef here. Now the other 4-star is Wavebreaker's Fin. This is definitely a strong gacha weapon for Raiden, but only after about 3rd refinement. Refinement, I would say it gets on the same level as the catch, but if the team you're using have really high burst costs and you can get some damage boosts for Raiden, the results will speak for themselves and at full refinement, it's almost as strong as unrefined Staff of Homa. Now moving on to 5 star options, Skyward Spine is actually an interesting weapon because while you cannot utilize the whole passive, she still benefits from attack speed and critical rate increase, which some would argue are worse than the catch, and it is kind of true, however, the base attack is is good, and if you're especially interested in learning more of her burst combos, getting that attack speed boost does open up to a few new ones that you can do, but I would say that the best benefit is actually just having a faster and easier time doing the combos you already know, as you will notice the difference. Another quick mention goes out to Calamity Queller, it's better than the catch, but again, I would only recommend this if you have strong artifacts with good critical stats. Now, Primordial Jade Wingspear is a slightly better option, but it's mainly thanks to big 22% critical rate you get from the substat, while the passive kind of works. But because you cannot build the stacks with her skill when she's off-field, her initial slash won't benefit from the weapon passive, although further burst attacks will do. Staff of Homa is also in a similar situation. Raiden will rarely fall below 50% health, especially if you use a healer, but even then, that massive critical damage and sizable attack boost puts it into the second best place in overall weapon ranking. 
Finally, we have Engulfing Lightning, which is obviously her best in slot weapon, although something that I don't see a lot of content creators talk about is that this weapon is primarily designed for endgame players who have really strong artifacts and can reach good critical rate and damage ratio, because otherwise, you are better off with something like good old Homa. But these are basically my weapon rankings and thoughts about them. You can look at a quick graph here and just soak it all in, but overall, if you can, just use a fully refined catch if you don't have any other 5 star alternative while Wavebreaker's fin is only really worth going for if you have it fully refined, and if you do end up getting engulfing lightning, well, have fun using her best in slot weapon. So with everything that's been covered so far, it's time we take a look at Ace team building options. First of all, it's important to understand that she doesn't really have a specific role because of the way her entire kit works, but a good way to describe her would be that she's an on-field hyper carry, but only when she's using her burst mode. You could say that's exactly what Hu Tao and Xiao can do as well, but the key difference here would be that Raiden also provides support for her allies through her elemental skill and burst, so think of her as a support that basically becomes your main damage dealer for about 7 seconds after using the burst. But what does it mean for you? Well, in almost all cases, you want to build a team around Raiden, even if she is sort of considered to be a support character, but think of it like this. The remaining teammate scratches Ace back, and she scratches them back with energy generation. Now, aside from this horrible idiom, there's actually a pretty basic core team foundation you can follow when building any team with Raiden. You first want to always start with an animal character with Verdescent Artifact set. Almost anyone here is a great choice, but the ones that stand out is Kazuha, who provides the best damage boosting for her, as well as some really good enemy grouping, then Venti, who helps her charge attacks reach all the small enemies in his vortex, and then Sucrose, who even though doesn't have the best grouping, she can help Raiden with Thrilling Tales. Also, if your team ends up without a healer, you can use Jean. Animal has always been strong in many team comps, but with Raiden, it really helps with her burst's initial slash and attacks, so if you want to push her damage to the limits, you are going to want to stick with these green characters. As for the remaining two positions, grabbing a healer or shielder is highly recommended, even better if they can provide damage boosting for her or the team, since Raiden's Sword mode lets her completely ignore stagger from enemy attacks, and you'll want to focus on dealing as much damage as possible without, well, dying, so bringing a support that can keep her alive is essential. Finally, a sub damage dealer that can deploy a skill or burst when using Raiden is your best bet, because she does take about 7 to 9 seconds of field time, and a deployed skill that can create reactions is recommended. And remember, teammates with high burst costs help Raiden build her resolve faster, which in return ends up boosting her overall burst damage. So, with all of that said, an example team could be Lisa, Raiden, Jean, and Xing Cho. You open up with Raiden's skill, switch to Xing Cho and use his skill in burst, go to Jean and activate her burst to shred the enemy's resistance, followed by Lisa's burst, and then finally going back to Raiden and unleashing her burst. It's a pretty simple rotation that maximizes on Verdes and Venrir, a top meta unit like Xing Cho and Lisa. In fact, what I really like about this Librarian is that she provides a ton of value for Raiden, since you can equip her with Thrilling Tales, give her a Noblesse Force set, and if that's not enough, her passive will enable her burst to shred away 15% of enemies' defense, which is almost half of what Raiden's second constellation offers. I think people have been sleeping on Lisa for far too long, and I hope that if you do decide to build a strong Raiden team, Lisa is actually a really good choice for her. And yeah, she does have an expensive 80 burst cost, but guess what? This only helps Raiden build more resolve and in return, she helps reduce Lisa's burst cost with that flat energy she provides. But enough shilling for Lisa, as I want to just quickly run down some of the best meta teams you can use right now. Now, the first one is, of course, Rational, which is the highly popular national team renamed with Raiden, and it's made up of Xing Cho, Xiangling, and Benny Boy. Previously, the biggest problem with National was Xiangling's high burst cost, which made meta players go for more energy recharge substats, but thanks to Raiden, you can now have an easier time building Xiangling with more offensive stats, and in result, this is the easiest and one of the most powerful meta team comps currently available in the game. The second meta team is called Hyper Raiden, and it's made up of Kazuha, Benny Boy, and C6 Sara. You don't need to have Constellation 6 Sara, but it's highly recommended to at least have her second Constellation unlocked, but even then, the calculations have shown that you're then better off running Lisa with previously mentioned loadout instead of Sara, and you can also swap out Kazuha with Sucrose, but it's going to reduce Raiden's overall damage potential. Finally, there's Electro Charge Comp, that doesn't really have one set-in-stone team, but with the Aimiko's arrival, the Fox 
Sexy Lady and Raiden have become a common duo, while Shing Cho or Kokomi and either Kazuha or Sucrose or even sometimes Venti are the remaining choices. Personally, I've been running Raiden, Yai, Sucrose and Kokomi so that I can leave Kazuha and Shing Cho available for my second Abyss team. As an honorable mention, Eula with Raiden also worked really well since Raiden's elemental skill provides excellent electro application and the most popular variation currently used in Abyss is made up of Eula, Raiden, Benny and Rosaria. But that's pretty much all you need to know about team building. The key takeaway here would be to utilize teammates with expensive burst costs, who can also support Raiden when she goes into her burst mode, so that she in return provides flat energy for them, and this creates a powerful and easy to use rotation. Overall, I believe Raiden is one of the best units you can get right now, because not only does she offer amazing damage, but also works as a top choice for restoring your team's energy. And I think with the way Hoyoverse have been releasing new characters with expensive burst costs and enemies that steal energy away, well, you'll definitely want to have her if that's an issue for you. Finally, I want to quickly address the whole debate around C2 Raiden. Yes, this is a powerful upgrade that puts her in the same league with almost any other C6 character, so if you really like her, getting her second or even third constellation is worth it, and I personally have these constellations. But just to be clear, I managed to beat several Abyss rotations with just C0 Raiden, so it's not a must-have upgrade in order to play her. In the end, it's the teammates and artifacts that matter the most, and I really hope you first consider your financial situation before trying to push for more copies of Raiden. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. I'd appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and like the video, as it will help me big time. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.